Myungjin and Jiaram are on their way to his workplace. They are taken aback when they find Min Jae waiting for them. Min Jae is hoping that Myungjin will help her with the Cardinal Point case. They both agree that the second victim's body needs to be exhumed. Min Jae wants to see if the initial inquiry overlooked any writing on the body. The Crown Prince informed her that he would send someone to assist them in excavating the body after she had already discussed this with him. She had been informed by the Crown Prince that Scholar Park would be sent from Namsangdal. Scholar Park was described as a tall, handsome man. A man with numerous talents never previously seen in Joseon. Scholar Park runs a bit late and when he arrives at the meeting point, Min Jae is surprised to learn that it is the Crown Prince. Elsewhere, Sungon is concerned about the talisman, but he must put the Cardinal Point case before anything else. A soldier informs him of the potential victims the assailant could attack. Later, Sungon is informed that the second victim's body is being exhumed by the eunuch, and he is upset. Jie Ram, Myung Jin, Min Jae, and Scholar Park exhume the dead as Sungon tries to search the registry and set up a patrol in the east of the kingdom. A court lady is given a note at the palace notifying her that Gosundol is not a eunuch in secret. He is a soldier that the crown prince brought in on the day of the royal hunt. The queen also tries to visit the crown prince but is told that he has locked himself in the library to study. The queen assumes that he is stressed about the Cardinal Point case and that is why he took eunuch Sundol with him. The second victim's body is exhumed by the four sleuths in the meantime. Myung Jin notices a post-mortem stab wound on the victim. They wonder why the victim was still stabbed by the assailant even though he was already dead. They find out that the murderer is out for revenge after noticing writing on his hands. It is likely that the murderer is attempting to harm the Song family based on the messages left on the three victims. They had to spend a lot of time exhuming the body, and by the time they made it back to the capital, it was past curfew. They are taken to a pub by Myung Jin, where they eat and drink. The ability of Min Jae to control her drink astounds the crown prince. Jie Ram afterwards takes a drunk Myung Jin home. The crown prince and Min Jae, meantime, have an exciting evening playing hide and seek with the troops who are out on patrol. They wager that whomever is caught first will get their finger flicked and Min Jae admits that she finds it fascinating. They discuss a variety of topics, including books and life outside the palace. They also talk about the case, and Min Jae expresses sadness at having to oppose Sung An. She nevertheless views it as an effort to save lives rather than a competition. Together with the ghost letters, she asks the crown prince whether he is hesitant to put his trust in Sung An because it is predicted that his friend will betray him. She also asks if the Crown Prince is worried that Sungon can be killed or hurt too. She is informed by the Crown Prince that he already holds himself responsible for the messengers and her family's deaths. Min Jae expresses regret for blaming him for the death of her family and admits that she spoke rashly. Min Jae urges the Crown Prince to visit his friend Sungon as they pass by his home. Sungon is shocked to discover the crown prince in disguise roaming around after curfew and that he has brought Sundol eunuch. Sungon chooses to admit his lie by displaying the talisman sold by Ol Man Shik to the crown prince. The crown prince is disappointed that Sungon lied to him to protect his father. He asks Sungon how he expects him to trust that he won't betray him. Sungon begs him to have compassion for the struggle he felt when believing that his father had attempted to discredit the crown prince during the royal hunt. He reassures him that he will always be on his side and that he had intended to be honest with him in the morning. The crown prince replies that he gave up on friendship the moment he ascended to the throne in response to his friend's request for understanding. Sungon is also reminded by the crown prince that he has previously promised to support him. As Min Jae overhears their talk, the patrol officers take her into custody. Luckily, the crown prince gives the order to free her, and they return to the palace. The crown prince is wondering in the palace which of his court officials has betrayed him. Things become chaotic in the queen's palace as he muses on the person behind the betrayal. 
Jo Wonbo overhears three court women disparaging Prince Myungan. Before kicking them out of the palace, he beats them up and gives the order for them to be severely beaten. Later, he confides in the queen about his preparations to ensure that Prince Myungan succeeds him as ruler. He makes the point that because they are a powerful family, gaining additional authority will be simple. He subtly mentions that he will make sure something happens to the crown prince. The queen begs him to put an end to the cunning schemes, but he is certain that she rises to the occasion and becomes the most powerful lady in Joseon. On the other side of the palace, Min Jae tries to understand the messages left behind by the killer. She realizes that the murderer's intention was not to refer to the Song family specifically but rather to the four stages of life. She surmises that the murderer will target a lady who is about to give birth in order to mark all four stages of life. She rushes to tell the crown prince but the soldiers stop her from entering since the crown prince is already asleep. She leaves a message for him and quickly goes to update Sun On. At first, Sun On wanted to ignore him but decided to listen. They quickly send troops to protect pregnant women in the east. He and Min Jae also go to the scene together and arrive just in time to save a woman who had just delivered. Min Jae is harmed during their battle with the killer, but thankfully, Sun is able to overpower the killer and catch her. She is a shaman, which is surprising, and she is killing to exact her revenge. When the crown prince comes, Min Jae is unconscious and lying on the ground. Rushing to her side, he makes an effort to wake her. Min Jae briefly wakes up and says that she saved someone. For a brief moment, before fainting once more, she reminds the crown prince that it was not his fault that the messenger and her family were killed. The crown prince tells her that he was scared to death that she got hurt. He picks her up and refuses to let Sunon carry her. He tells Sunon that he trusts Sundol and he can't let anyone else carry him. Sunon is reminded of what his father said about the crown prince not trusting him. Mandioc getting a letter shot by an arrow. The letter tells him to get ready to go home. He bids his wife, Boksun goodbye and heads to a house in the middle of a forest. The king wants to know why a shaman started killing people, and the court is meeting elsewhere in the palace. We see the shaman in a flashback before she turned into a murderer. She was possessed by a spirit while she was praying. The shaman is the selected one who will carry out a prophecy of the ghost, the spirit claims. She was instructed to kill four persons in accordance with the human life cycle in order to fulfill the prophecy. She began the killings in this way, but she has not yet finished the last one. While the crown prince tends to Min Jae's recovery, Myung Jin muses about what the final message would have been. He is also interested in the previous message, and the court officials are also concerned about it. They request that the king take over Sunlan's handling of the case and interrogate the shaman himself. The new minister of justice offers to take the case and reveal every wrongdoing committed by the shaman. Another court official asserts that Sunlan needs to look into the case because it is connected to the prank during the royal hunting ritual. He notes that Sunlan is already on his way to the Office of Shamanism to gather information. Sunlan discovers the Office of Shamanism under attack by masked guys when he goes there. Sunlan engages in a fierce fight with the masked men, striking one of them in the arm. We later find out that the man was Mandioc. It seems he is part of the group that is working with the person behind the shaman. Out of worry, Boksun tries to talk to him about leaving the group. Back to Sunlan, he is upset to hear that the group has already destroyed whatever proof the shaman may have left behind. He only finds out that the shaman went to Gaesong to pray and that when she came back, she had white hair and smelled different from the incense they usually use. He returns and shares his findings with the crown prince. The crown prince starts to suspect if the shaman was involved in the murder of Min Jae's family. Outside the palace, Jie Ram is worried about Myung Jin failing to come to work since she last dropped him at home drunk. Bok Soon tells her that it is highly likely that his mom has locked him up. They start talking about the arrest of the shaman and how eunuch Sundol saved the day but got hurt. 
Hearing this, Jiram decides to try and sneak into Myungjin's home to try and find out what he knows about the status of the eunuch. She encounters monk Mujin while traveling and unintentionally breaks his bottle. They attempt to save the strange fish he was holding in that bottle while she apologizes. Jiram is certain she has seen him before, but she cannot identify where. Luckily, Myung Jin decides to escape from his home and he runs into Jiram trying to sneak in. They head to his office and on the way, Myung Jin tells her about his upcoming marriage to the daughter of the Minister of Personnel. He sees this as a chance to escape from his tiring home situation and is generally excited about the marriage. She asks him if he has heard anything about eunuch Sundol and begs him to ask his dad. Min Jae finally wakes up at the palace and is shocked to discover the crown prince taking care to her. He even gave the dissatisfied Taegang the order to make her medicine. After solving the case, she asks whether the crown prince can now trust her. He admits that he has been believing in her for some time. Min Jae expresses her gratitude and how much it means to her to hear this. He talks about her father and they share stories about the kind of man he was. The other eunuchs decide to assign Min Jae hard responsibilities once she is able to resume work, but the crown prince keeps saving her. They are furious about this, but there is little they can do. He wants to make sure she gets enough sleep and a healthy diet. She encounters the queen while running one of her errands. The queen likes her and describes her as a praiseworthy and intellectual person. As she heals, the crown prince promises he will find a way to use her. He asks to hear her side of the story about what happened the day her family was killed. Min Jae is sure that the soup she prepared was poisoned after she served it. She also admits she bought arsenic but only because she intended to study it. She claims that she didn't eat because she was worried about the letter the crown prince sent. She didn't go to breakfast with her family because of this. She doesn't remember much about that morning so the crown prince asks her to try and recall everything. He also asks if Sim Young was her lover and she refutes these allegations saying she only saw him as a brother. She doesn't understand why he betrayed her or blamed her for the murders. They were really close and he was the one who taught her how to fight. She insists they go through the evidence collected that day to find out what they missed. The crown prince agrees, but advises her that they must first resolve the mystery behind the ghost letters. The final letter from the ghost is shown to her when he opens his save. The severity of the prophecy in the letter astounded Min Jae. She assures the crown prince that he will no longer have to experience isolation and worry about the curse on his own. She promises to support him all the way through. The crown prince shares with her his hypothesis that the shaman was somehow connected to both the letter and the passing of her family. Min Jae inquiries about the location of the shaman's detention. Regrettably, the shaman has declined to explain the reasons behind the murder. She only tells Sunan that she is the chosen one and that her mission has not failed yet. She assures him that they will discover the last message when the time comes and the one designated to hear the prophecy appears. The crown prince decides to send Min Jae to the shaman's house to see if Sunan missed something. He also sends her to deliver gifts and a name for the newborn baby they saved. The crown prince asks her to be careful. At the shaman's house, she meets Sunan and she thanks him for listening to her. She confesses that it was only with his assistance that they were able to save the mother and child. She notices that he is still carrying around their marriage consent form. She asks him if he is still waiting for Min Jae but he says that he is moving on. He believes he betrayed her and is already dead. She is saddened to hear that he doesn't think Min Jae is innocent but she understands him. She enters the house to search for any proof, but all she discovers is a pile of dried flowers in the incense burner. Later, they return home together on foot. As this is happening, some court employees are out having a good time. They are commemorating the embarrassment caused by Sunan's failed marriage and the event at the royal hunting ceremony. Jo Wonbo is also having a party at home after discovering that the Gosundol in the palace is not the actual one. 
A soldier comes to Sunlon's house and confirms that Min Jae was the one who used the cave. Sunlon is grateful she's still alive. He is also told by the soldier that Simyeon killed himself. Sunlon is shocked to learn that Simeon's suicide note was taken by the crown prince's men. He is torn as well as he wonders if Min Jae really did betray him. The crown prince is shocked that Simyeon killed himself but he is more angered after reading his suicide note. Simyeon refers to Min Jae as his sweetheart in the letter, and the crown prince asks as to whether Min Jae lied to him. He tells Tae Gang to call Min Jae right away.